If God has been good to you, tell him thank you. If he's preserved your life, you see, these last weeks in 2015, someone shall thank you. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. We come in that time and that season where we want to focus on the Christ, the reason for the season. And today as we journey just a few days away from Christmas, I want to focus our attention to the gospel according to St. Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And it reads, and it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augusta that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the host and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child, who it was. But while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. For the next 30 to 45 minutes, I want to talk to you about no room in the inn. And I talked with the executive team last night, and we were wrestling with who to blame for this. And I said, blame Joseph. No room in the inn, blame Joseph. In this day and time, especially in the period we're in, nobody travels without reservations. Especially when you think about all that is going on in this season between now and the new year, it would be considered foolish to hop on the plane and go somewhere, assuming that there would be room for you. Let me confess that in times past, I've traveled without reservation. I know I'm the only one here today. Uh, before the advent of technology, I traveled to places and gone to hotels where I was familiar, where I was a regular. And, and just because I normally would find a room there, I showed up only to have the desk clerk say, Mr. Fernando, I don't see you in the system. And I would look at him, you don't see me in the system. I reach in my pocket and I would rest my hand on the counter and put it halfway and say, do you see me now? Do you see me in the system now? And this time he looked and said, I can't help you. All of the hotel is booked up. And I was so sure of a room being the typical Bahamian. I was out shopping all day. Hallelujah. I went all day. My car is full to capacity. Stuff that cannot sleep outside. I need a room. It was so bad that the person behind the desk and said to me, he said, Mr. Chandler, I can put you in a room, but you won't like the room. I said, there's a room in this hotel? He said, yes, there'll be a room in this hotel. And it's in this building? He said, yes. He said, I said, I don't care what room you put me in. I would be satisfied with a room. But he booked me in, charged me the same rate, and I'm ashamed to say I slept in the crayon room. 
It's a room set aside for kids to play on. It's not like some of you sleep in the crayon room before, too. It's a room set aside and it gives the freedom for children to color all over the place. The bed was too small, <laughs> toys everywhere. It was a miserable night. But I had no one to blame but myself because I made no reservations. And not only has that happened before, but uh, we've traveled as a family and we made reservations on these electronic booking sites. Uh -huh. And we booked three stars. And when we got there, two was missing. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? That, that the place wasn't worthy to be characterized with any stars at all. But we booked it. And when we arrived, we figured out we couldn't sleep here. One time in particular, we were interstate traveling, my wife and I, and it was an emergency. I was on my way to see my pastor who was having heart surgery. And so we traveled to Atlanta, Georgia, on the highways and byways, all the way to Nashville, Tennessee, to a hotel with no stars, smoke everywhere. And we determined that we couldn't sleep there. And so we called the place, and they said they would cut our money. But I said, but what are we going to do? She said, you have to book again. And so all midnight, we're in the lobby using the hotel's internet, who we just said we didn't want to stay in, <laughs> trying to find room. It's a bad feeling. Be driving around midnight, hotel to hotel, only for them to tell you. No room. In particular, they give you a look like you didn't know better. You just show up here looking for a room. And as I look at this text today, I know it's presumptuous to assume that there was the reservation system back in those days, but, but you had to assume that if there was an end, there was a way to book the end. There was a way to claim your room. Because Joseph knew that he was going home. Going to his family then. Going back to where I was born. That somebody would give me a room. There was a room that will have my name on it. Only to be embarrassed when he arrived. That all the night of them was full. Now you had to go to the neighborhood inn. Searching for a room for your wife, that one betrothed to you. Zig Ziglar said that his brother was able to book rooms when there were no vacancies. And he gave a secret on how his brother was able to do it. And he said his brother looked like him. He was a very stately man. And he would go into the room. He would go into the hotel, finally dressed in his best black suit. And he would put on his sharpest eye. And he would walk up to the counter and they would say sir there's no room in the hotel tonight and Zig Ziglar's brother would say you mean there's no room for the president of the United States he said what what if the president was on his way right after me you would have no room for the president of the United States, well, they would go on their computer and say, sir, tonight we have uh, one of our penthouse suites and we would make it available for the President of the United States. He said, hold on a second, let me check with him. And he would come back to the desk and said, I have it on good report that the President of the United States will not be in this hotel tonight. <laughs> See, but the same room you had for the President of the United States is the same room I will sleep in tonight. Some of us are not that bodacious to move in that boldness. But many of us this Christmas season have left no room for Jesus. But the room of our heart has been booked out. You see, what a reservation does, it's set aside 
is ahead of time space for you. It holds it. it. It keeps it just until you come. It has your name on the reservations. But many of us still, as it was in Joseph's time, have made no specific arrangements for Jesus. We've left cookies for Santa Claus. Some of you, listen to me, some of you are about to cook meals that are above the calorie count <laughs> in so many ways. And you will slave all night but can't make it to church. It's all right. I'm going to preach anyway. Can I declare to you there's still no room for Jesus? 2015 years AD, still Jesus shows up and there's no room on our calendar for him. Yeah. Can, can I lift a few points why, why I think that this no vacancy sign has cropped up in the Bahamas, has cropped up in our lives, that, that one of the reasons I believe that we don't have room for Jesus is that we just too busy. Someone ought to say, preach, preacher. You're preaching to me. Maybe that's the story of our lives. We can get so busy that we don't have any room for the things of God in our lives. For most people, we live very busy lives. To be honest, it's hard to even fit the master on the master's calendar. We can find time for anything but Christ. And we forget it is he in whom we live, move, and have our being. I know I'm on your toes. If you can't say amen, just say ouch and I'll be off in a little bit, maybe 20 more minutes. People talk about how busy they are and talk about how they don't have time for what God is about to do. But can I tell you, he controls time, that, that he's the one who gives life, and he's the one that takes it away. How audacious can you be to think that it's your life, it's your time, it's your breath, that you could do whatever you wanted? What if that this morning he took away what belonged to him? What if he didn't give you health and strength? What if he didn't give you an opportunity to enter his gates with thanksgiving? How dare you take God's time? and tell him you don't have time for him. We seldom spend time in his presence. We seldom open our hearts to what he is wanting us to do. Like most people, just like Herod, Herod said to the Magi, said, you go, you find him, you get him, and then call me and I'll come and worship. He was saying, like the majority of us, I'm too busy right now to worship. But you church people, you go and worship. And when you find where Jesus is, tell me where it is. And maybe watch that, maybe. Maybe watch that. You gotta pray. Uh, you gotta pray. They don't have no big concert. Maybe watch that. I, I know I'm walking the Tina Turner might show up, so you got, you got to pray. You got to pray to Anna Ross. <laughs> Don't have a hot show. Maybe, if you tell me where Jesus is going to be, maybe I'll pass by quarter two. Maybe. For God's sake, Pastor, leave two seats open for me because it could be a hit and miss. I hit you in going straight to John Canoe, right? I just pass him through. We want somebody else to go. We want somebody else to identify the spot. And then we'll come later and put in our hour and a half of worship. Some of us are just like, and I don't want to go any further than that because sometimes when these people show up, they try to kill worship. I won't leave that alone because you're so drunk. Oh, hallelujah. You're talking all through worship. That you have become.